before you take your seats, if you open your Bibles to Romans chapter 8, verse 31, that one verse um, will uh, have our theme verse for this month, and then I'll share with you our theme for this month. Um, so thank you so much for doing that. If you don't have your Bible, that's fine. Um, look on the monitor behind me. I read out of the Amplified, and here's how it reads. Let's read it together since we only have one verse this week. Y'all ready? Go. What then? If God, who can be, who can be our foe, if God is on our side? Let's say it one more time. What, sh what then? If, who can be, who can be our foe? I thought for this month just simply two words, it matters. Everybody say it with me. Say, it matters. Subtopic for today, knowing your God matters. Would you just uh, lift your hands and shout, God, I'm glad I'm getting to know you right where I am. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let's walk. I need to move uh, this week. I have several things that I want to um, share with you. Thank you to all of you who are here to learn more about uh, the great God that we serve here uh, in Christian. Um, everybody shout, all right then. Let's talk. Satan is always, I put in your notes, Satan is always sought to diminish the one true God. Now, I want you to note that I said that Satan has always sought to diminish the one true God. He tried, or there has been schemes, if you will, to deny the one true God, but but that is a foolish scheme. Everybody shout, that's a, that's a foolish pursuit. The, the most simple of individuals in life can conclude whether they have experienced God the way you and I have or not, that they could not have gotten here on their own. The cosmos in which we live is much too complicated to conclude after looking at the sun, the moon, the stars, the water, the seas, the beast of the field, the fowls of the air. After watching and looking at all of God's handiwork, it is impossible to look at creation, to look at the complexity of humanity and conclude that somehow we, we, as the most complex of all of created beings or forces, got here through evolution or by ourselves. And so it is a foolish endeavor. As a matter of fact, the psalmist says in Psalms 53, verse 1, it's not in your notes, but he concludes that the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So Satan then, your, big, your adversary, he knows that it is a foolish endeavor to try and convince you that you should be atheists. Y'all listening to me. Everybody shout, so, so let's get that out the way. So his, his, his ploy then is not to make you an unbeliever in God. That, that is a foolish endeavor. His ploy is to diminish God, is to diminish God. It is to do what? To diminish God. Therefore, his chief weapon has been to marginalize God, big G, by making God, little g, a universal term that can be what and whomever you identify God to be. Denial of God has always been a foolish effort. Everybody shout, all right. Say it again. So the enemy then has not sought to do anything but diminish God, and he does so by giving us new ageism, humanism, that teaches us that, hey, we're not going to deny God. We're just going to say everything is God. And if everything is God, then that diminishes God. Are y'all listening to me? Y'all still don't get it, so let's see if I, can, if, if I can make it a little bit plain. That's my mama right there. Now, all of us have mamas, but that's my mama. Now, if I let y'all walk in here and talk about my mama, y'all listening to me? Y'all would diminish my mama. Y'all listening to me? So that I don't respect her as mama because of the way you have attacked my mama and I let it happen. Y'all listening to me? So even if we're singing the old song that we used to sing back in the day, y'all too young, those that are too young won't know what I'm talking about. Those of you that are older will know what I'm talking about. Even if we were singing a little song, my mama, your mama, Hanging out clothes. Whose mama saw two in the nose? My mama saw your mama in the nose. But your mama won't be socking my mama in the nose because I'm not going to let you diminish my mama to me. Are y'all listening to me? My mama, your mama hanging out clothes. Who got sock? 
No, your mama got salt. <laughs> Sister Doty like, nah, your mama ain't touching my mama. And now we have a mama battle. And if we can understand the importance of protecting our mama, why do we relinquish protecting our God so easily to every idea that humanism and new ageism can bring up? Are oh, y'all listening to me? I said, are y'all listening to me? I said, are y'all listening to me? And so then, the idea of God is one that even in Christian churches is not one that we talk about much. We come to church and spend God's time talking about your car, your house, your this, your that, and little about our God being a champion about his greatness. And so people fill pews week in and week out and are no more closer to their God than they were before they ever came in. But that cannot be, that cannot be okay with us. That cannot be okay with us. I said that cannot be okay with us. And so then, and so then as we think about it, um, this week what I have concluded that Knowing God really does matter, especially if Satan is out to diminish God. Everybody shout, okay. So let's talk about what we believe. We believe, as Christians, we believe in the triune God. I want you to notice that I use the word the and not a. We don't have a God. We have the God. I know it's going to make you uncomfortable, but I just want you to have the truth. Not a truth, the truth. Y'all listen to me? Because I don't serve a God, I serve the God. Hallelujah. We believe in one God. Let's talk about it. We believe in one God who exists eternally in three persons. Let's, let's define those three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy. Stated differently, God is one in essence and three in person. These definitions express three crucial truths. And so then, as we think about God, if, as we think about God, because again, I have studied this long enough to know that Islam thinks that they have us when we talk about the triunity of God. They think that they have us because they say, your Bible says, Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. How is it that you can say you have one God, but you're telling me it's God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? That's a contradiction, and the law of contradiction will not allow you to do that. And I say to my Islamic brothers, you are just misinformed. We do not have three gods. We have one God. It is one what? The what is God. That God God is made up of three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Are y'all listening to me? And they three come together to give us one essence, one what. That what being God, you ought to get to know him because it matters. Shout out at your David and tell him you ought to get to know him because it. So let's talk about it as we see it in Scripture. The Father sends the Son, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The son returns to the father. It is expedient for you that I go, but because if I go, I will return to my father. John 16, 10, John 16, 7, he tells them, I know you don't understand everything I'm telling you, but once I go to my father, I will then send the Holy Spirit. So then the father sends the son. The son returns back to the father. The son then sends the Holy Spirit. Perfect unity. God in three persons, blessed trinity. Y'all see it? I said, do y'all see it? Second truth I want you to wrap your head around is that each person within the triune Godhead is fully God. Each person, say it with me, each person within the triune Godhead is fully, say it with me, each person within the triune is fully now, this is important. It is important that you understand it, and we have taught this on multi. I see you, Brother Johnny. You like, man, you're going to have to get a little clearer. I won't come in for you. Now, if you take, if you take a equilateral triangle, if you take an equilateral triangle, it is how many triangles? One triangle. If you drew one on your paper, you could dry, draw the triangle, and you could draw one triangle. It will be equilateral, made up of three equal sides. Is that fair, everybody? Up one side, right, the Father. Down one side, right, the Son. Down the other side, right, the Holy Spirit. In the center, right, God. That is the Christian God. It is one essence, God, made up of three equal parts. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Y'all, please tell me I got that. Okay, good. So, so then, if I were to extrapolate or pull one side of the triangle apart 
and say, okay, I just pulled one apart. Let's say it's the father. Now, I pulled him apart. Do I still have a triangle? Do I still alone have God? No. In order for the Christian God to be whole, they must come together, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, to give us one essence. One what? Three who's give us God. Hallelujah. Y'all got it? So we have, we, have, we have three that give us one. We have one God in three persons. Y'all say it with me. One God in, say it with me. One God in, say it with me. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Father. The Spirit is not the Father. No. We have three eternal, co-equal beings that give us one essence, God, holy God. Yes. That makes sense, everybody? We clap for your God. We serve one God eternally existing in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Each person within the triune Godhead is fully God. Number three, there is only one God who exists eternally in three persons. How many gods exist in how many persons? What's their names? At, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Matthew 28, 18, he gave us the great commission. And in that commission, he told us to go into the whole world teaching everyone everything he had taught us, baptizing them. Y'all tell me in whose name? God in three persons, perfect trinity. Let me give you three attributes that I want you to know about our God. This is just stuff. For those of you that know your God, this is just like, uh, uh this should be good stuff. Because when I hear good stuff about people I love, I still get excited. Y'all listening to me? So one of the things I want to tell you about the triune God of Christianity is that not only is Christianity, does it give us this one God who exists in three persons? I always say this when I talk about the Trinity, that I, um, that I, I love the, the quote, I can't even think of his name, I'm looking the dead in the face, and anyway, I'll think about it in a minute, but I love the quote that, um, that one author uh, gave us, and he said, basically, the Trinity is like this, try and explain it, you may lose your mind, but deny it, you will lose your soul, because there's only one God who is able to save. Y'all listen to me? The truth of the matter is Christianity is the only religion that gives us a God who can save. And so if you study other religions, what you find is that you have to be good enough for their God. Whereas in Christianity, our God is just good enough for his people. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. He's just big enough for his people. So let's talk about his attributes. Attribute number one that I want you to think about as you get to know God this week is that first he is omnipotent. Present. He is always with you. The, the one thing that makes God God is the fact that one of his attributes is he, the fact that he's omnipresent. In other words, he is present everywhere and not absent from anywhere. Say it with me. God, the Christian God, is present everywhere while at the same time absent from nowhere. What a mighty God. We serve. He is omnipresent. And why is that so important, Pastor White? Because as you go through life's ups and downs, as you are attacked by the adversary, it is vital to know who, that God is with you. Y'all listening to me? Are y'all listening to me? How many of you have been through some things in your life? How many of you ever felt alone in your life? Aren't you glad as you're getting to know God? Aren't you glad to know that you, are, you have never, ever, ever been by yourself? Your creator, your sovereign creator, has, has always been with you because he is omnipresent. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. A second attribute of God that I want you to know, and that is the triune God of Christianity, is omniscient. Now, omniscient means that he is with you, and here is the good stuff. He knows everything about you. Hallelujah. Ooh, that's real good. Because, you know, there are some people, y'all not, y'all not listening to me, there are some people that you don't want to know everything about you because they might not like you. But it is refreshing when you no longer have to be fake. Hallelujah. It is refreshing when you can take the mask off and still be accepted. 
Hallelujah. God knows everything about you, and he still want to hang out with you. We ought to give him an applause for that right there. Woo! Yeah, man, that's some good stuff. Because I'm going to tell you that there are people that found out that I wasn't perfect, and they went on their way. But God knows I'm not perfect, and he still says, stand here while I perfect that which concerns you. Somebody shout hallelujah. What I love about God is that as you walk with him, him being omniscient becomes really good to you because sometimes, most times, all the times, you and I have no clue what's behind the next corner. But he brings us peace because he knows. Would you do me a favor and just, just shout down your row and just tell him, I know you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. But tell him, aren't you glad that he knows? Hallelujah. 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 I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I know you don't know what the next hour may bring. But the God who's walking with you, he already knows. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. You know why that's so good? Because when you make up God's, when you create little gods, when you believe everything is God. So that means that if I believe everything is God, then the tree is God. Now, trust, ask me this. Can that tree go with you everywhere? It's not omnipresent. Does that tree know what tomorrow's going to bring for you? It's not omniscient. Why would you believe that tree is God? And why would you let people tell you stuff like that? Well, I don't want to offend nobody. Doesn't it offend you that they are reducing, diminishing who your God is by talking stupid? I'm sorry. By talking nonsense? Why, why is it that the only people getting offended are the people telling lies? Why aren't the people with the truth getting offended that lies seem to be taking all more than the truth is? I don't know, but maybe that's just a conversation I have with myself, me and my God. Why is it that everybody's walking on eggshells except for the folk that are spreading lies, contaminating, diminishing the size of our God, causing us to walk around, bossed in, scared of everybody else when we have the only God who is able to save? And if we're not here to be saved, then what is it that we're after? So then, I stand here today to offer you and I'm not present God, not a God that you got to come to, but a God that will go with you. I stand here today to tell you it matters who your God is, because I want to offer you an omniscient God, a God who knows you better than you know you, a God who knows your tomorrows before you ever get there. And here is the third attribute of God that I want you to know that is consistent within the Godhead, and that is that he is an omnipotent God. He can handle that which is trying to handle you. Say it with me. God can handle that which is trying to handle me. Don't believe the tree is God. Don't believe the moon is God. Don't believe the sun is God because there's stuff they can't handle. Y'all listening to me? Are y'all listening to me? I said, are y'all listening to me? The sun is eclipsed by the moon every day. Don't worship something that gets eclipsed by something else every day. But also make up your mind. If you're going to worship God, don't allow the enemy to eclipse him because you didn't take time to get to know him. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. The God you serve is omnipotent. He is mighty. He is all powerful. He's triumphant. He is a warrior. He's never fought a battle that he couldn't win. He never fought a battle that he didn't win. He's never in, in, entered into a fight that he didn't show up to win. And so then, as you think about what matters in life, it matters if you have an omnipotent God or whether or not you have a weak jellyback God. It matters if you have a personal God who cares or an inanimate object that has no feelings at all. Somebody shout, that matters. Say it again, please. As you go to work this week, it's going to matter whether or not you show up in the parking lot walking through the hallways with a God who's with you or with a God who's in your pocket. It's going to matter whether or not you take, can take God with you or whether or not you have to get back to him if trouble arises. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I'm not talking to everybody, but someone that's not bored talking about God, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say it again. Say it one more time, please. Yes. Yes. God is, he is omnipresent. He is everywhere while not absent from anywhere. He is omniscient. He is all-knowing. He is omnipotent. 
Everybody shout, yes, he is. Say it again. Which brings us to our text. So what should we say then to all of this? <laughs> so what then should we say then to all of this? We serve one God who exists eternally in three persons. He is triune in nature, equilateral. Why I can't pull him apart. He's always together, perfect unity, all this good stuff. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's um. Y'all gonna help me. He's he's um. He's. He's, what should we say then to all of this? That if you serve a God who is always with you, who knows everything there is to know about you, and who is all-powerful, then I guess we must conclude that if God be for us, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. If he is for you today, and that's really all that matters. If he is for you today, then that's all that matters. And I know you want to make other things more important, but there's really nothing more important than that. You have an omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent God who is walking with you today, who is talking with you today, who is mighty in battle today. It really doesn't matter who's against you. It really doesn't matter who's opposing you. It really doesn't matter who doesn't like you. I have said this before, I say it again. I get frustrated when we spend good pulpit time talking, telling you to talk about your haters. Why are you focused on your haters when you have this amazing lover? Nothing is more frustrating to me than for me to be walking with my wife and she get uh, afraid when her warrior is with her. Baby, I'm with you right now. But, but did you see, but did you see, but do you know, do you know, do you know, do you know? And when you know that the person with you can protect you, now y'all have heard stories of me running before with, with my wife, so every now and then she might have a right to be afraid. But what you have never heard, though, is a story where God ran from a battle. You never heard a story where we were walking and we encountered something that God started to tremble in the presence of. So then what really matters is who is for you, who is with you. That's what really matters. Somebody shout, that's all that matters. Say it again. Say it one more time. Would you lift your hands up towards heaven and shout, God, I know that you are omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, and you are my God. And that's all that matters as I go into this week. Somebody shout, yes, it is. Say it again. Hallelujah. So let's talk then a little bit more. So as you get to know your God, I want to tell you what really matters. I want to tell you why it really matters. Because as you get to know your God, as I get to know my God, as we get to walk with him week in and week out, what you find out, and these are my last few fill in the blanks. Y'all listening to me? Y'all good so far? First thing I want you to note that really, really matters is your faith. And our triune God. Your faith in the triune God of Christianity, it matters so much that everything you've been encountering, Tremel, everything that's been happening in your life has been an attempt by your adversary to rattle your faith. He does not want you to hold on and keep believing. He does not want you, say it with me, the enemy does not want me to hold on and keep believing. No, he does not. And so when you think about why I would take the time to just talk to you about your God, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is if you still believe or not. And if you still have faith today, I want to submit to you that all things are still possible. 
If you can just still believe today and not give up on who God is in your life and who he is raising you up to be, I want to submit to you that nothing is too hard for your God. But you don't know what I've been through, but you don't know who you're walking with. But you don't know what I'm facing, but you don't know who wants to face it with you. But you don't know my struggle, but you don't know his power. But you don't know my headache, but you don't know his peace. And if you have faith in him, you will find that he really is mighty to save. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Shout with me, Lord, I still believe. Say it again, Lord, I still believe. No, 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 you got to say it. You got to tell him because the enemy's been working to try to rattle your faith. Just shout real loud. Lord, I still So suppose, just lift your hands and just shout, Lord, I still believe. Yeah. I still believe. See, 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 we come to church looking for miracles and we lose sight of the miracle. The miracle for me is not the manifestation of promises. The miracle for me is that I held on to faith until I saw the manifestation of promises. Y'all not listening to me because I'm telling you that from the time God promised to the time I've seen manifestations, much has happened that would have caused many to not believe anymore. But the fact that I still have faith, the fact that I still believe, the fact that you still believe, it's something we're blessing God for. So let's bless God for faith still being real in the room. And we know, Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, who are the called according to his purpose, for whom God foreknew. He also predestined. They won't put the scripture out there, so I'll keep giving it to you. That you and I might rest assured that everything that God said is shaping and molding us into the image of his son. Don't you dare give up on God. Don't you dare give up on God. Don't you? You know what's so frustrating? Hey, Benjamin, you know what's so frustrating, Sister Deborah, is that there was a season in my life when I almost gave up on God. There was a season when I almost thought I was smarter than my creator. And I'm so glad that he didn't give up on me. I'm not the only one, but somebody in here who almost gave up on God, but he wouldn't give up on you. Go ahead and put your hands together and bless him. So I put this quote in your notes for you to for you to meditate on, and that is just simply this. What lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to who dwells within us. I'll say it again. What lies behind us, our past, what lies before us, our future, are tiny matters compared to who dwells within us. You have an omnipotent God inside of you. You have a great God inside of you. He's worth believing in. He's worth holding on to faith for. He's worth hoping in. He's worth trusting in. It really matters. Second thing that really matters is that as you get to know God, that you recognize that the favor of the triune God on your life, it really matters. Somebody shout, okay. For many of you who are living lives that you didn't think was possible, don't you allow humanism and new ageism, ageism to think, to convince you that the only thing you had to do was just start thinking better about yourself. The favor of God has brought you further than you ever anticipated coming in your life. 
And the favor of God will get you into places that all your ingenuity, good looks, all your smarts could never get you into. And the favor of God cannot be underestimated. That's why you have to know your God. Because the favor of God will bring you before people you never would have been able to get before if he had had favor on your life. Somebody shout, yes, Lord. And the favor of God will allow you to grow in obscurity. It will allow you to grow on the backside of a desert where no one knows your name and then emerge. Y'all not listening to me with an anointing and an appointing that only God could give. And don't you dare give up on a God who's able to favor his people like that and go out and try to make life happen on your own. The devil is a liar. So then, would you do me a favor and put your hands on yourself and say, self, you got to be honest. We don't know how we got here ourselves, but we do know this, that favor ain't fair. Say it again. We do know this, that what is not fair. So then the favor of God, the Bible says, what shall we say to this in Romans 8, 31? It says, what shall we say to this, Jeffrey Shippey? If God be for us, who can be against us? This is favor on display. What should we say to everything you've been through in your life, Jeffrey Shippey? If God is for you, favor ain't fair. What should we say then, Lawana? You standing here today, you singing, you jumping, you shouting. What should we say on all that? If God is for me, it doesn't matter who's against me. You say, but I don't think he favored me that much. Hold on, verse 32. The God who wouldn't spare his own son because of you. Now, favor ain't fair. The God who said to his son, take death in their place. Take their curse in their place. Take their pain and their suffering in their place. I favor. Why? I favored them, and I don't want them to go through it. You go through it for them. That God is the God that you're going to tell me no longer matters? No. Somebody shout, no. Say it again. Say it again. And so he goes on to say, he didn't even hold back his own son. He said, so if he didn't hold back his own son, if favor got the son of God killed so that God could spare you and I, then who can lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Yeah, it is amazing what getting to know God will do for someone's life. So I gave you this quote, and I want you to think about it. I didn't, couldn't give the author credit, but I didn't write it. Here's what it says. When God has selected you, it doesn't matter who has rejected or neglected you for the favor of God outweighs all opposition. Everybody shout yeah. Say it again. Break here and yep. The favor of God outweighs all opposition. Yep. Yep. Has anyone in here been through anything that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt if it had not been for the Lord on your side? I just, I just want to show a hand. If you know, if you haven't, I don't want you to make up anything, but if you've been through something in your life and you know that literally if it had not been for the Lord, that's favor right there. That's favor right there. So let's thank him for favor. Let's thank him for it. No, let's, let's thank him for it. Let's thank him for favor. If you're doing better than you deserve right now, that's favor. Let's thank him for it. If you have peace that the world couldn't give, that's favor. Let's thank him for it. Let's thank him for it. If you know that you messed up a long time ago and he was able to, to, to clean up your mess up, that's favor right there. Let's bless him for the cleanup. Clean up on aisle one. Clean up on aisle two. Clean up on aisle three. Here he come. Clean up, clean up, clean up. If you know that he was hung up for your mess up, that's favor right there. Let's bless him for it. Y'all be seated. My time is almost up. So then, everybody just shout, Pastor White. No, shout back to me. Pastor White, this stuff matters. 
Say it again. What stuff, my faith? It matters. What matters? The favor of God. It matters. Thirdly, what matters? The faithfulness of God to you and your faithfulness back to him matters? Hallelujah. 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 I said hallelujah. What shall we say to all this stuff? We should say that the faithfulness of God to every one of us and whether or not we'll be faithful back matters. I love how the Apostle Paul concludes. He said, so who shall separate us then? From the love of God we have found in Christ Jesus. Man, he goes on to list all types of calamity. He says, I am persuaded. He said, I'm persuaded. This is twofold. That God's not going to quit on me. God knows I'm not going to quit on him. He's going to be faithful to me. And I'm going to remain faithful to him. Say it with me. God, this week, I know I'm going to encounter some stuff. But I'm sure of this. You're going to be faithful to me. And I'm going to be faithful to you. What's going to happen this week? God's going to be faithful to me, and I'm going to be faithful to God. A final quote I put in your notes. The same faithful God who brought us this far will take us from here if we are faithful to the Lord. Brother Carlo, the same God that brought us here. He's going to take us from here, Brother Dare. If we're just faithful to the Lord. Now here's what I know, Elder Charles Ryan. The enemy is going to come hard. He's going to hit you with everything he has to try to knock you off course. He's going to work hard to get you to trust in people rather than God. He's going to work hard to try and get you to trust in stuff rather than God. Because he knows that the faithfulness of God is not in question. The question is your faith. The question is your faithfulness. The favor of God is known on your life is not in question. You say, how do you know, Pastor White? Because if God didn't favor you, the enemy wouldn't be fighting you. He's only after those who God's hand is on. I want to submit to you that, that there are troubles in your life that you wouldn't have if God hadn't favored you. But what I love is that as you sit here today, here's the reality. God knows your name. He knows my name, and he just simply wants to walk with us as we leave out of this place and embark upon life this way. As our praise team begins to sing that, I just want you to think about it. Who are you walking with this week?